One of the things that we get asked a lot, and actually that I've personally spent a lot of time talking about and, and thinking about with members of the agility team is how we think about robot control. The idea being, all right, uh, there's this really interesting hierarchy that you know Jonathan and the control team have been talking about for years that sort of break the robot stack up into a couple different pieces. So there's like the foot having physical contact with the ground. Uh, we say, you know, at a control rate standpoint has sort of an infinite bandwidth, right? So it's a piece of physical stuff hitting another piece of physical stuff. And that happens, you know, mediated by physics. Uh, then there's the next layer up from that, which is the low level motor control that's occurring at you know, a couple kilohertz rate, so a couple thousand times per second, there's a little tiny microprocessor that's making the motor do things uh, lower down in the robot. Next level above that is planning for what happens with the, uh, the joints on the robot, but at a rate that's not those kind of instantaneous levels. So think about that as kind of the level at which the robot, quote, knows how to walk as opposed to knowing how to keep its muscles uh, at a certain level of force. And then the, the really interesting breakpoint above that is actually the, the one that got us thinking about the horse and rider analogy, which is that it separates, it separates the intent into something that's clearly different than the body, right? So if you're riding a horse, uh, you and the horse are not the same person. Uh, and therefore what you're thinking about is the rider. And I actually used to take riding lessons when probably 30 years ago when I was a lot younger. So you have some personal experience with this. You have to kind of decide what what you want to do, and you're you're basically trained to uh, help the horse understand your intent, but you're absolutely not puppeteering the horse's legs. And I think there's a misunderstanding about people who are newer to robotics that there's some element of the high level AI or decision making that's puppeteering the robot, and that absolutely doesn't occur. It simply can't occur fast enough, uh, and so. That breakpoint actually exists within the real robot system too, but really is easy to see in the horse and rider analogy case. So the the interesting thing about that analogy is that it contains a lot of relatively subtle truths, which is the horse is, uh, if you think about what, what's the horse want to do, you know, priority one is probably to eat some grass, but priority two is to not hurt itself running through the world. And the intelligence that the horse has to have at minimum is how to not break its legs. Um, I did some a little bit of jumping back when I was taking horseback riding lessons. So uh, how to navigate a particular jump is up to the horse, just to be clear. So the timing of the approach and all that is really up to the horse. The intent of, hey, I'm going to go over this jump and not a different one is up to the rider. But much of this is actually under the horse's control. And that's true of, of, of robot bodies. It's actually even true of your body that, you know, part of the cool thing and, um, I was thinking about a sort of personal analogy for this is I do a lot of long distance uh, cycling. And uh, I've always been fascinated by, by my ability to use clipless pedals because when you think about it, being able to clip uh, a bike cleat into a pedal while you're also solving problems of being in traffic is actually a really interesting manipulation and control problem. And that, that I'm aware of that occurring subconsciously in a way that I'm not aware of uh, deciding to continue breathing as an example. Um, and that's an interesting case of, of that kind of analogy. Like part of my body clearly understands the motor pattern for doing that. And I'm aware of the understanding, but also can't articulate in words what exactly it is that I'm doing to pull that off. And that that's another piece of this whole horse and rider analogy is as the rider, you know, the high level cognitive AI piece of this, you're also not aware of everything that the horse is doing. So when we think about controls then, you know, turn this back into, you know, what's agility doing with this? Um, we had a open question at the time that I gave uh, this keynote, again, about five years ago, give or take, if I'm remembering right, uh, as to where the high level AI was going to come from. And, and different companies have solved this different ways. There are some companies out there uh, that solve the high level AI piece actually with just full on teleoperation of various flavors. The AI is literally a person literally telling the robot what to do on a second by second basis. Uh, we would argue that that's not really practical for scale. Other people have made different arguments about why they would uh, want or not want to do that. Uh, the second piece of it is actually to say, well, no high level cognition is actually necessary for the practical deployment that you're doing. And that's actually the approach that we're taking with some of our partnerships right now, uh, precisely because there isn't really high level cognitive approach. There is integration with a warehouse management system, or there's integration with a set of instructions that you give the robot, uh, you know, hey, go move this tote from point A to point B, after which it looks a lot more like the horse side of it, right? So uh, the decision piece of uh, a lot of the e-commerce stuff that we've been doing is really knowing that you want the tote from 
uh, column three, row two, and move that tote over to the conveyor belt, after which the horse side of the robot is largely responsible for this. Um, so that's, I think, the fastest path towards a commercial market, because it's not sidestepping the need for the high-level control. It's just turning that into a system that you know, for these large e-commerce and logistics companies already exists. And then the third piece of it that's really cool that we've just gotten into this year along with everybody else in the world is asking the question of what, what high-level AI can we actually graft onto this? And this certainly was not on anybody's radar, much less ours, five years ago, uh, but has become very relevant with LLMs. And the interesting thing with them is they can express and, you know, be careful with the metaphors, right? No, no entity that is conscious that we're aware of is expressing anything here. But uh, the the metaphor probably holds pretty well that the LLM can say, "Hey, go do this thing," like we've shown uh, with the demo that we pushed out in May, and then we've done some other stuff more recently. Uh, so, just broad, in broad strokes, what that is is teaching the LLM all of the syntax for the robot, such that when uh, a high level, very abstract command, hey, go take the red box and put it on the pillar that's the middle height, uh, when that comes through, that the LLM can be responsible for converting that into a set of lower level commands that the horse side of the robot's brain understands. And you can think about in this case, the rider is then the high level AI and the horse in this case is everything that occurs below that stack. Uh, that may or may not actually be integrated into the same mechanism in humans, right? Your cortex actually is that high level awareness and there's all kinds of other things, your brainstem and other functional parts of your body that are doing what we would call subconscious tasks, which in this analogy is more of the horse stuff.